Hello, hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to have a look at one of the features in Fabric that, to be honest with you, has quite interested me quite a bit over the last few days, and that's domains. So we've got this new construct within Fabric that can isolate workspaces and isolate workspace items. Now, Microsoft have said that, hey, you can use domains in a data mesh. And actually, that's in the official documentation. And well, from what I understand of data mesh architectures, yeah, have a logical grouping of things that's assigned to a department or a business area. They're responsible for those and they can share with other departments, other domains. But I don't think uh, domains, you know, can just be used for 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 the for data mesh. Um, but one of the things that I was looking at also was this separation of capacities, because in Fabric you can create you know, multiple capacities and assign workspaces to those capacities. And I had to think about the whole workload isolation. So I'm going to bring up a little PowerPoint where I was just sketching out some some ideas. I actually, you know, sent this to, to Microsoft and said, hey, you know, does this look, you know, reasonably valid? And, you know, in their own documentation, yeah, if you have development and UAT workspaces, then it might make sense to create different fabric capacities and have those workspaces connected to those capacities. So if you've got development workspaces, if you've got UAT workspaces, hey, put those on, let's say, Azure SKU, the F SKU capacities, scale them up and down to whatever you need and possibly leave your production SKU to be the, you know, the N365 SKU, you know, the equivalent you know, P SKU in Power BI. Um, but yeah, if we skip back into Microsoft Fabric itself, so the domains feature, if we go down into the admin portal, we've got domains. So front and central in the admin portal itself. And I've already created three admins, marketing, sales and finance. Pretty standard stuff, right? If I go into marketing, uh, you can see that I've given it a name you know, a description of marketing and a domain image, right? So I've been able to, you know, select an image from a pre, um, you know, a pre selected list of um, images, and then I can assign domain admins and, and domain contributors, but I can also see the workspaces in that domain. So if you scroll down, then I've already associated three workspaces. So in this video, we're not going to sit and watch me click buttons to create things. I've already created the workspaces. But it was just to go through what could be a common pattern in Fabric. So if I go into the data or the One Lake data hub, then I've actually got the, the domains drop down. So I can select all the domains and all of the artifacts from those domains can be discoverable in this data hub. But if I want to limit what I'm looking at, then I can go in and select, well, I want to look at sales. And then if I scroll down, then in my Explorer, I've got you know my production sales workspace, but I've also got my dev and my UAT. Now what I've done is I've endorsed the Power BI data set, uh, which automatically endorses the SQL endpoint and also the lake house in the production workspaces. So if I click on endorsed in your org, then I get a filter that just shows me these are the endorsed artifacts or the endorsed items in that workspace. So I can endorse my production items and my production um, you know, fabric artifacts, fabric items, and do the same. So I've done the same with finance. So I can go into finance. I can see all of the workspaces. So I've got my dev 
uh, UAT and finance, and the same with marketing. Yeah, whereas if I click on endorsed, it's just gonna show me those items that have been certified. So yeah, if we're looking to isolate specific departments, data, yeah, a data mesh, then creating a domain, creating those workspaces, associating those workspaces to that domain, and then creating your items within the workspaces, certifying the relevant ones for production, then we can see that we can separate yeah, workspaces and items you know, into this domain um, construct. So I'm gonna be interested to see the security as this goes forward about how you can completely segregate you know, domains from each other in terms of users. Um, and also look at the workspace security in there as well. But in terms of the capacity association, so if I go into one of those workspaces and let's say, yeah, we just pick finance. So in the workspace settings up here in my premium, then I can select, you know, what, well, what licensing I've got associated to that workspace. So imagine that trial was my actual M365 slash P skew that I, you know, pre-purchased, you know, for, for 12 months. And that's what I associated with my production workloads. If I go into another one of the workspaces, let's say the dev workspace and go into workspace settings and premium, then I can select a fabric capacity and say, well, actually, I don't want any of my development workloads to impact what's going on in my production. So I can go in and say, well, look, I've got an Azure F SKU that I've created and I can assign it to this workspace. So I'll go ahead and apply. And now that's running on fabric capacity that's completely separate to, let's say, the production capacity. Um, let's go and do the same with the UAT. So go into workspaces, go into UAT, select premium and select my fabric capacity that's on UAT. And of course, you might have a separate UAT capacity as well. But we've got the flexibility to just assign those fabric capacities to those workspaces in a single domain. Yeah, so we've separated all our objects across domains. We've got workspaces with our, let's say our lake house items in those workspaces, but they're assigned to different capacities. So I think that's pretty useful. As I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens going forward with security in terms of these domains as well. But you know what, I would have loved to have seen domains in Power BI. It's good to see it you know, in, in Fabric, but you can see how useful it is to take content um, at the workspace level and just assign it to domains and group workspaces into these domains rather than workspaces being, you know, kind of a flat hierarchy. So, yeah, like I said, I'm going to be doing some more fabric stuff. I want to do more on the SQL warehouse side of things. I wanted to take a little, a little step back and just look at the domain side of things just to get myself used to the workspaces and assigning those to domains and different capacities and, and seeing how an overall architecture of a solution could work, you know, within fabric, within you know a single tenant as well. So this is all being done in a single tenant. So if you've enjoyed this, uh, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.